Hello and welcome to another video by the Bearded Tech Guy. In this video about Unraid, we will be going over one way to swap out a smaller parity drive for a new larger parity drive that then gets repurposed and replaces an even smaller drive. For example, I currently have two 4TB parity drives and an assortment of 4, 3, and 2TB drives for a total of 12 discs, which is the maximum I can fit in my C2100. I recently purchased six 8TB drives that I want to put into my Unraid server, so I must first upgrade my two 4TB parity drives so that the 8TB drives can be used. I also have a large number of 2TB drives, so I would much rather replace them with the old 4TB parity drives to gain a little extra space. The parity swap procedure allows for me to replace the 4TB drive with an 8TB drive, copy the parity information from the 4TB drive to the 8TB drive, and then reassign the 4TB drive to replace a smaller data drive that is then rebuilt. The other way to do this would be to first replace the old parity drive and rebuild parity, then replace the smaller data drive with the old parity drive and rebuild the disk. While both procedures are about the same number of steps, the parity swap procedure requires only swapping out one disk instead of two, which if you're like me without space can be a bit annoying. The other benefit of the parity swap procedure is that in theory it produces less stress on your array as you're only copying parity information instead of rebuilding parity. Three steps you should do prior to this procedure that I will not be covering are making sure your drive or drives are stress test to make sure they are good to go, including pre-clearing your drive if you do that making sure your parity is good, and going through all documented steps to make sure you are prepared. You want to make sure that all of these tasks are completed to ensure a good parity drive swap. For me, I am on version 6.7.2, and I would like to mention that this process only works if your array starts out in a healthy state. It will not work if you have a failed drive. As will be seen, I have already used this procedure for my parity 1 disk, and we will be walking through using the same steps on parity 2. The first step is to disable auto start for any Docker apps you may have installed and to turn them off. This will prevent any unintended writing to your array during the process. To do this, navigate to the Docker section and toggle off auto start for any app that has it enabled. Then left click on any app that is running and click on stop. Then navigate to the main section of Unraid. Once loaded, take a picture or screenshot of your disk setup, including serial numbers. This will be very important to have in future steps. Next will be to stop the array. To do this, scroll to the bottom until you see Array Operation. From here, click on Stop. This will take a few moments to actually stop the array. Next, unassign the old data drive that is being removed. For me, this will be one of the 2TB drives that's getting replaced by the old parity drive. To do this, select the drop down for the disk being removed and set it to no device. Doing so will mark the disk as missing. Scroll back down to array operation and check, yes I want to do this, under the warning about how starting the array will disable the missing disk. Once checked, you can click on start. Your array will then take a few moments to start up. Once started, you should see the disk is missing from the array, as well as receiving a warning message. This step is required for the swap procedure to work, so make sure not to skip it. Once the array finishes starting, you can go ahead and stop it again. This will again take a few moments to complete. Now that the array is stopped, it's time to shut down the server. Do this by scrolling to the bottom of the page and clicking on Power Down. Depending on hardware, the server can take several minutes to fully shut down. Make sure to verify that your server is actually powered down before opening it or interacting with the disks. Next, remove your old data drive from your server. This is pretty straightforward for me since my server is hot swappable bays, so I just pull out the correct caddy, remove the old drive, put the new drive in, and slide the caddy back in. For others, yours may be more or less work to accomplish. Once the new drive is installed, it's time to turn Unraid back on. This will also take a few minutes. Next, re-log into Unraid and navigate to the main menu. From here, select the drop-down for your soon-to-be old parity drive and select No Device. Then reselect the drop-down and select your new parity device. You will see a warning indicating the drive selected is wrong and that all data on the drive will be overwritten when the array is started. Next, select the drop-down for the old data disk we recently removed and select the old parity drive. Doing this should make the new parity disk as well as the soon-to-be-replaced data disk marked as blue. You will want to make sure both drives are showing as a blue status before continuing. If they are not, re-go through the steps and make sure everything was done correctly in order. If you are still having issues, I highly encourage you to reach out on the community forums and do not continue forward. You can risk losing both your data disk, parity disk, and have actual file loss. So as long as both disks are showing blue like on the screen, scroll down to Array Operations. 
You will notice here that the start button and text have been replaced with a copy button and text about how the copy operation will copy the parity information from the old parity drive to the new one. Click on the checkbox next to yes, I want to do this, and click on the copy button when you are ready. Doing so will kick off the copying process where parity information is copied from the old parity drive onto the new one. Depending on the size of your parity drive and hardware, this will take several hours. You will be able to see the process of the copy occurring so you can have some idea how things are doing. During this copying, your array is still stopped. Again, this will take a good amount of time so you can just leave it until it's done. And while you wait, now is a great time to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to be one of the first to know when I release new videos just like this one. After the copying is completed, the parity disk will show green under the array devices. Next will be to rebuild the data onto the old parity disk that replaced the smaller data drive. To do this, scroll down to Array Operation and click on Start. This will expand the file system for the drive size and then bring the array online to start the data rebuild process. This will also take several hours depending on disk size and hardware. During the rebuild, the array is online and can be used if desired. However, it is not recommended as it will add additional time onto the rebuild process. Just like the parity copy, the data rebuild will have a status shown of how things are going. Once completed, you will see a green notification indicating the disk has been returned to normal operation and that the rebuild has been completed. Now is a great time to run a new parity check to make sure everything is healthy as expected. And with that, we have successfully swapped out an old, smaller data drive with our previously used parity drives that were also swapped out with larger drives, allowing us to now add larger drives to our array for more capacity. I'd love to hear all the different things you use on RAID for, so let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you found it helpful, as it helps out the channel immensely. Thank you for watching.